Welcome to APEA Dog Grooming. Today we are grooming this very lovely pug and her name is Masha. So we're going to start off with the back since pugs are double coated you should never ever shave a double coated dog and that's why we're going straight for the bath. So I have a special way that I bathe these flat faced dogs because well since they are flat faced you can't run down the water on their face as you would on a you know a regular uh, muzzled dog because the water can get in their nose and you can actually you know cause them a lot of discomfort and you know it's just dangerous to put water down a dog's nose. I believe the proper term for flat faced dog breeds is brachycephalic. Correct me if I'm wrong on that pronunciation, but um, it's basic it basically just means that its head is shortened, meaning that their nose is right up against their stop if there even is a stop and you know there are lots of dog breeds like that like Shih Tzus, Lhasa Apsos, obviously Pugs, Bulldogs, French Bulldogs, Pekingese, Boxers, um, Sharpays, Napoleon, Mastiffs, and a whole lot of other breeds. But today we are just um, baiting this very cute pug. So what I like to do is just bathe the body um, as I usually would, you know, normal. But on the face, I will actually take a towel or a rag, whatever you have, and bathe that separately. I love all dog breeds, but... Um, I I don't really care for these uh, flat-faced dogs because it just seems to me a very awful way to live. I know a lot of you may disagree, but um, you know they they have a really hard time breathing, and I don't think that's very fair for them. You know, to live their whole life trying to gasp for air. So anyway. That's the towel I'm going to be using on her face and I'm just going to get it wet with some soapy water. I'm going to clean her face, her cheeks, her muzzle, and especially, you know, really clean out under the eyes because they have a fold of skin right there and you really need to get that nice and clean because it can really smell because of all of the moisture it you know accumulates and since it's a fold um, a lot of bacteria can actually build up in there and that's what actually makes it you know smell pretty bad so make sure you clean that out nice and thoroughly You can tell she really dislikes me touching her face and that's totally understandable. So this is the way I like to bathe these types of dogs because, um, you know, it's so much more safer for them than to put the shower head right on her head and, you know, have all the water drip down basically into her nostrils and that can be really dangerous and, you know, I don't even want to imagine what that would look like. So this is the safest way I have found 
but the body we're going to wash as normal. So now that we have um, soaked up her face, we are now going to rinse her body. Now that a few minutes have you know gone by, the shampoo has already done what it need, needs to do. And we're just going to take this uh, shower brush, which is called a Zoom Groom. I find it really helpful on short hairded dogs. It really gets right up into the skin and it just gives them a really nice scrub in the tub. These Zoom Groom brushes you can use in the bath and you can also use them when um, they're nice and dry and they, they have like a double purpose. Well, I use it as a double purpose brush for the tub, you know, just to get really into their skin and clean out everything but you can also use it on dry hair as a de-shedding tool. The rubber is such a, not sticky because it's not sticky, but the rubber that the brush is made out of, it really grabs the dead undercoat. And yeah, so now we are going to rinse the face using the same towel. We've just rinsed out the soap and everything and we're going to use it on the face again so that, um, you know, we don't leave behind any uh, soap or shampoo or anything. Alrighty, so the bath is done and now we are going to towel dry. Um, when towel drying a short haired dog, it is so much more, not harder, but uh, it just takes longer for them to get dried rather than, you know, a poodle or so because their, their hair is um, double coated. Their fur, they have a double coat, so you know, it really takes a lot of water and a lot of air to go to penetrate that coat. So, you know, just make sure you towel dry as much as you can right before you put them in the dryer because, well, you know, most dogs don't really like the dryer. So, I like to put the towel on the, the floor of my little um, table here so that um, it absorbs the water that you know drips down from their feet so now we're going for the nail trim and um, I like to pull out my quick stop and just um, unscrew it and put it on my countertop just in case I nick a nail and that way I know where it is and I don't have to scramble about in my drawer you know I get a little um, you know agitated when I don't find something that I need especially if you know the dog is bleeding I don't want to be looking for that while the dog is bleeding so I'm actually taking a look at her hind foot and her nails are really short 
they're right up on that quick I haven't um, turned anything yet and I can see the quick so that will need no cutting and as a beginner I will admit I wanted to you know cut every dog's nails and you know give them the full service but I've learned over time that not every dog needs their nails to be cut when um, they come in so I'm just gonna cut whatever needs to be uh, tipped off you know the nails are pretty sure I'm just cutting off the tip so they don't scratch the owner and I like to do this right after the bath usually if I can um, and since they've been you know soaking while I, I was bathing her that just prevents the nails from cracking rather than you know cutting a dry nail make sure to hit that subscribe button if you like what you're watching so now we're using the force dryer and you know force dryers really help get um, your your short haired breed dog um, just dry so much faster than if you were using a a fluff dryer or a hand dryer and that just takes out the bulk of water since their coat you know retains a lot of um, water because of that double undercoat um, I will be using a nozzle on her later on because well this this um, the I'm sorry the force dryer on its own wasn't really getting her dry and I'm just using my what I use as a fluff dryer which is just a normal um, human hair dryer um, you know as a heated element sort of that just um, keeps her nice and warm while I'm trying to you know get the majority of the water out so pugs shed a lot of hair you should um, I've had owners uh, request for me to shave their pugs before and that's something you shouldn't do um, as a dog owner you should you know know what kind of breed and what special needs and care and everything that they require before you get one because well why why would you shave a pug if you knew from the beginning that it will shed like crazy like Pugs shed like about the same, I would guess, as a Labrador, just, you know, in smaller size. So for, you know, the owners out there that have asked me to shave their pug, it's, my answer is a no, a for sure no. There is no way I'm going to shave that pug because, well, you know, you should have done your research on this dog breed and you know shedding is part of it you should comb your dogs out more this way you know they all the hair that um that they may leave around your house will you know be on a brush or in in a comb or whatever you use so now that that's you know been said don't shave your pugs um there are a lot of tools out there for you to de-shed double-coated short-haired breeds. For example, there are, I am going to dem uh, demonstrate what I use on Masha, but uh, I just want to say there are like a bazillion, bajillion tools out there that you can use and everything is valid when you're trying to, you know, take care of your dog's coat. And she's really giving me a hard time there on her right side. I'm not sure why. Another trick I have picked up over time is that you, um, if you're having trouble with your dog disliking the dryer, you know, any kind of dryer, um, 
Try not to point it towards their face. Try to put the nozzle away from their face. And that just really helps from the air getting in their ears, which, you know, is basically what they're um, complaining about, that the sound and the, and the feeling of the air going on their face. So I'm just using a small slicker brush just to loosen up anything that may want to come out. It's not going to really do much, but it is going to separate each and every single hair from each other from being moist, and that just um, really helps with the drying time. So since she really disliked the force dryer, I'm going to use um, both of my, you know, more silent, smaller dryers. They are just normal hand dryers. And that, um, I find that, you know, for dogs that are scared of force dryers, um, this is a great option for that because they produce a lot less noise and they produce a lot less, um, wind or how would you say that anyway I'm going to go in with my furminator there are some pros and cons of using a furminator but today I'm going to use it and this really strips out any undercoat that may be in there I noticed she really didn't shed a lot but the furminator really took care of that Like I said earlier, there are a lot of tools out there you can use to de-shed, and this is a, a de-shedding rake. This is a coat king, and you can usually use that on maybe a longer short-haired breed, but you can tell that that really didn't take out any of the um, dead undercoat as well as the furminator did. I do use that rake on my Labrador and, you know, it just depends on what their breed is and how long their hair is. It really depends on each dog what tools you can use, but there are a lot of tools out there you can use. So when using a tool like a furminator, um, you always want to use a light hand when using it. You don't want to, you know, really dig into their skin because it can, you know, hurt their skin. But all you want to do is take out the dead hair. You don't want to, you know, be scratching at their skin or anything. As any tool you would use, use a light touch. You want to go with the grain of the hair. You uh, would usually won't want to go against the the hair growth, the pattern which where the hair grows. You want to go in the same manner that the hair grows. That way you can um, 
you know, safely use your de-shedding tools. You can use in some instances um, in different directions, but you know, for this case, she's not really shedding a lot, and whatever we can get is a plus. So, something else I want to point out is that I do have a grooming loop on her. However, it's not just around her neck, it's actually around one of her shoulders. So, it's not, I mean, she's having a hard time breathing just because of the breed that she is. And I don't want to, you know, cause any more um, breathing discomforts that she already has. So I'm using that loop around her shoulder so that, um, you know, it's just more comfortable for her. Because you can hear while I was breathing her, all those like grunting noises and that's just her grasping for air. So Masha is a new client, we've never um, groomed her before, but I think she did really good. I mean, pugs are notorious for um, not liking the nail trim, and I think she did really well. Okay, so now we're going to grab again our Zoom Groom brush, our rubber brush, and we are going to use that to keep on shedding her. I'm just going to dry it up really quickly on my dryer because it was wet from the bath. And I'm just going to use that, um, you know, to safely go around her face, her head. Just go, you know, all over her body with it. You can really tell it grabs onto the um, hair. If she were shedding like crazy, this would really loosen up anything that you know, didn't want to come out. And I frankly find it a very necessary tool in a grooming shop. Like I said, you can use it, you know, when bathing and, and wet, and you can use it dry for de-shedding. So it's a very versatile tool to have in your shop or, you know, for your own pets. It will not, um, be very helpful for poodles um, you know just it really is for double coated dogs it's not really for non shedding breeds also when using your zoom groom in a dry pet it's not only helping with the de shedding part but it's actually also evenly distributing the oils from the dog skin into their coat so it's making them you know, nice and shiny, nice and healthy again, and it's promoting healthy new hair to grow. All right, guys, so that's all for this video. This is how I bathe my flat-faced dog breeds, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more videos like this one, and happy grooming, and stay safe out there. Bye!